Yeah. All right, so we're going to keep working with uh, templates, and you guys all have your system set up, and you all have your editors, except we got one person we still need to get going. Something's funny going on with their Mac. And uh, last week, we looked at like doing a form letter, what templates are. So templates are basically form letters where you merge fields. And uh, and then after we looked at those, okay. The, when you went through that yeah. last week, yeah, oh, it was way too much for me. So cool. Can you go back and do? Yeah, we'll we'll do it one piece at a time. So this is this is a template, right? And you know you can imagine with this template, I could then just run this against a database full of records, and for each record in the database, insert the first name and print out a letter for each each person. Dear Todd, dear Jennifer, dear Bob, dear Frank, right? And so that's a mail merge. That's it. And we use a template to do that where we stick in fields, which we pulled from data somewhere. Okay? I understand the concept, but cool. I don't know how to set it up. All right, that's the concept, right? And then we looked at just like a little bit of like, uh, you know, hey, what is a template, right? So in some ways, we could kind of do something where, we're just merging data and using concatenation with strings. And then when we do that, you know, this becomes pretty much the HTML, right? And we have that string. And we could put that out to a file. So that's just kind of interesting. Okay? And that's just like a little interesting thing, like to think about, you know, using programming to kind of get a variable and text to come together, two pieces of text to come together and be HTML. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the templating functions that are built into Golang. And we saw this last week. And so if we look at godoc.org, text template, right? And if you forget this, at godoc, you could just search for template. And it'll be text template and HTML template are the top two. And those are from the standard library. Standard library is the stuff that people who are working on the open source project, which is the Go, Go programming language, Huh? Yeah. So, uh, you know, the standard library is, uh, you know, it's, uh, that comes with the Go programming language. It's built by the people who build the Go programming language. It's an open source project, primarily Google, but anybody could contribute to it. And, um, and so the text template and HTML template are, are, are packages which allow us to do templating. So we look at text template. We could read through this and it gets pretty complex, right? So if you have a lot of experience with programming, this will make sense to you. But if you're new to it, it's just easier to kind of watch the examples. And then once you see the examples, um, you know, you could come back and some of this stuff makes sense. Some of this stuff still does not make sense to me. But like I said, I'm no rock star coder. I'm just very stubborn and persistent. I start figuring stuff out over time. So here is... Uh, you know, one of the main things we want to do whenever I come to this is I, I look at the index. And so I just came here and I clicked on index. So whenever I come to a, a package, so we're looking at the template package, right, from text template, I go to the index and I look at what's in the index. And so I have a type template here. And inside here I have, <clears throat> like, new will give me a pointer to the template. Parse files will give me a pointer to a template and an error. So these are functions, right? Parse files, I'll pass in file names. The dot, dot, dot string means it's a variadic parameter, and it will receive as many strings as I want to give it, comma-separated strings, okay? So I could pass in all kinds of file names, and, uh, and then I'll return a pointer to a template. Parse glob will allow me to parse an entire folder structure. If you look up what a glob is in like Unix or something, it's basically, I don't remember, but what kind of came to me is like, oh, that makes sense for a folder, right? It's a bunch of stuff. Like glob even kind of sounds like a bunch of junk, right? So that'll parse a whole folder full of templates. And then it puts it into this variable or this type that's actually a type, which we could assign to a variable, right? The value is of pointer to a template type and we could assign that to a variable just to try to make that as technically precise as possible. And um, I like to think of pointer to a template as a bucket into which I've put all my templates, which I could then execute. OK? 
Okay? So what's that look like in action? Last thing I'll say is when you have a pointer to a template, you have all these methods. Because the definition of a function is go is func, receiver, identifier, uh, parameters, and then returns, right? Here's the return, and then your code would be after that. So that's the definition of a func. So these are all methods of anything which is of type pointer to a template. So now, now, uh, now what's that look like? So here I have main.go, and I do template parse files. So template, right, from package template, this is saying from package template, parse files. So when I look, I have package template, and parse files is right here. Parse files, I could give it one or many strings. Okay, that's the variadic. It's going to give me back a pointer to a template and error. So parse files, I give it one string, gives me a pointer to a template and an error. I check the error. If the error is not nil, meaning there's an error, then I'm just going to log fatal, stop my program, and log out whatever that error was. All right? Otherwise, I'm going to do TPL execute. And I will execute my template. Where am I going to execute it? I'm going to execute it to standard out. And, uh, and I'm not passing in any data. Okay. And um, so if we look at this stuff and try to understand how does this code work, how is it that TPL has this method? Right? TPL execute dot execute. Well, TPL, when we ran template parse files, template parse files, gave this pointer to a template, right, which is a, a, a value of that type. Okay. And uh, with the value of that type, we assigned it to this variable. So the value got assigned to that variable. So that variable is now of type pointer to a template. If it's a pointer to a template, we have all of these methods available to it. One is execute, one is execute template. Execute takes a writer and a data interface. So anything right here, any data of any type. Execute template takes a writer, a data interface, and a name. What is the name? It's the name of the template. So if we had parsed many files here, we would then say template execute template, right? And it would take tpl.go html or whatever the name of the file was that I had told it to parse. And now I'm saying execute this one. So this basically just makes whatever's in this, right? Because this was parsed, makes whatever was in this stored in this, well, I call it a bucket, where all my templates or parts get stored. And so now that it's in there, I could say, okay, we'll execute that template, and I'm going to execute it to standard out. Or I could just say execute, and if there's more than one template in there, it executes the first one, because I'm not specifying which one to execute. Okay? Is that a good stopping point? Can you run it just so I can see what happens? Sure. Okay. Okay. So basically just produced what was in the template.gohtml file. But it, it, it is an output. Yep. So you store the template.gohtml in a variable. Yeah, maybe this will help you. Yeah, so this got stored. It got parsed and it got stored in this container because that container can hold more than one. It could thousands of templates be parsed and put in that. And then we could just execute whichever one we want. And maybe it would help you to see where we're headed with this which is, uh, 
you know, eventually we're going to be serving these to uh, through a, a website. Yeah. And so we do HTTP. We have a package HTTP. It has listen and serve. Right now we're just going to do that at localhost, which is uh, port 8080. I don't want to do that. And we're not passing any data. And then with that HTTP, we do handle func, which basically says, hey, at this route, run function foo. I don't know why my mouse gets squirrely when I'm running HDMI cable off of my computer. It's weird. And here, write string, right, to response, the HTTP response, foo ran. So if I run this one, just so you can see where we're going. Foo ran. Okay. And I think my other one is bar. No. My other one is, it is bar, it's forward slash dog. I need to make that bar. That's just confusing. Maybe I wanted it to differentiate that you don't have to have that be the same as this. That's probably what I wanted. And where did dog come from? parse files, TPL, give me my TPL, TPL execute, execute it to my response, right, which is my response writer. I'm not passing in any data. And so this is from dog. If I wanted to pass in data, I'd say, you know, put the data right there. And then right here, I could pass in four, right, and then refresh this. I have to re rerun it. Hold on, because I have to reparse my templates. Control C to stop my server. Rerun it. Okay, so that's eventually like hopefully next week or the week after we'll be doing servers. We'll be down here in these files. I've got a bunch of challenges and solutions for us to work with to refine our skills with templates. Maybe I'll give you those as homework. Okay. But I'm going to reset this file here. I guess it's kind of cool to see data being passed in. I'll leave it because you'll have learned that by then. But that's where we're going. So I'm going to stop this video.